Hey everyone, my name is Robin Winborn and this is a quick video demonstration of WebCore, the new rules engine for the SmartThings platform. WebCore was created by Adrian Karamaliu on behalf of the SmartThings community. Expanding on the original core, it adds previously unimaginable capabilities to the SmartThings ecosystem. It's an extremely powerful rules engine which, among other things, allows users to set up complex rules known as pistons for home automation, using stack conditions, custom variables, expressions, and a lot more. Unlike its predecessor, users of WebCore interact with their pistons via an online interface which provides an intuitive approach to building a piston, allowing users to visualize their creations in an easy to understand script-like view. Though the script view can be a bit daunting at first, it differs from a regular script editor as the page is interactive. It provides pop-up windows and drop-down menus rather than having to manually type code like you would in the SmartThings IDE. Installing WebCore is just as easy as any other custom smart app. Adrian has done an outstanding job and once the four parts of WebCore are installed in the IDE, the app guides users through the setup process. Users simply need to give the app a name and password, choose their devices and sensors and hit done. They can then go to the main page of the WebCore app and generate a code which is used to securely access the web interface. Browsing to dashboard.webcore.co takes users to the main login page where they can enter their unique code and confirm their password. This takes us to a blank dashboard with a sad face because we haven't got any pistons yet. So let's crack on and make one. I want to start with a simple example to demonstrate just how powerful, quick and easy to use WebCore is. Let's turn on a light when motion is detected. So using the web interface, we'll go to add a new piston. From here we're given a bunch of options. We can create a blank piston. We can create a duplicate piston. We can create a piston from a template, restore a piston using a backup code, or import a piston from an external source such as people sharing their pistons on the community forum. So let's go for create a blank piston. Uh, the author name's already there, that's me. Uh, let's give it a, a name, let's just go for test. And we need to turn on automatic backup, which I'll touch on a little bit later. So let's go ahead and create. So we start off with a blank script view. So the first thing we need to do is go on and add a new statement. From here we get some options, we can add an if block, we can dive straight in and add an action. We can set a time for things to happen at a, a specific time of day, week or year. Um, if we enable advanced features, there's a lot more options underneath, which I'm not going to go into for the purpose of this video. So let's go and choose an if block. From here we can choose a condition or we can build a group of conditions. So we're just going to go and put a condition in. Uh, first off, we've got some options. So we can choose between some physical devices, virtual devices. Uh, we can put a fixed value in type of variable, expression or an argument. If we were to go for virtual device, uh, we can choose things such as the dates, link up with Echo Assistant, IFTTT, location mode, routine, smart home monitor, and it can even detect if there's a power failure in the house. So if the power goes off and the hub is on battery, that can act as a trigger to set off a piston and, and alert the user. Uh, so we're gonna go for physical device. We want to detect motion, so let's go ahead and select my living room motion sensor and we'll choose the attribute motion. Uh, from here we can choose a comparison from the list. Uh, we can either choose conditions such as changed, is, is not, was and so forth. Uh, or we can choose a trigger such as changes, changes to, stays, stays unchanged. We're going to go for is, so living room motion is and we're going to choose active. We'll add that in and you'll see that it's added the line onto the script view. Next thing we want to do is to tell the piston what to do when there is motion. So we under then, we can go add a new statement and we're going to go in and add an action. So which device do we want to do it with? So we're going to turn on my living room lamp. 
And then we've got a list of things to do with the lamp, so I'm going to choose turn on. So turn on with motion. And we're going to add that in. So if living room motion is active, turn on living room lamp. Now for many people, that's probably enough. Um, and that's all they're going to need, but we're going to need to add in an else because we want the light to turn off when the motion stops. And rather than having to type it all in again, what we can actually do is select the statement, drag and drop, and create a copy in the else. Then all I need to do is change that to turn off. So we don't want the light to go off straight away as soon as motion ends, so we'll add in a wait. Say 30 seconds of no motion for the light to turn off and we'll drag that above the turn off so that the wait happens before. Now we could stop there um, and many people would um, but just to show you the power of WebCore I'm going to go ahead and add a SMS message so that when the motion is detected We get a message and I'll just put the old number in so that I don't give you my phone number. We'll save that in messages and add. So now when there's motion we'll get a text message. Uh, also you don't want this happening in the middle of the day so we can turn on restrictions so only when add a restriction and we want it to happen by time is between Go from sunset minus 30 minutes through to let's say 11 o'clock at night. We'll add that in. So I think we're done. We could keep piling on more conditions such as certain people being present or the alarm being turned off, but for the purpose of this demonstration I think that would do. So if we click save, we'll save it to the smart app, and then go back to this preview status page where we can view the script we prepared. And now we're ready to start testing. A huge bonus of using WebCore is the backup, share and restore features. We can go down here to this green button and it will generate a piston screenshot which can be used to share with other users on the community. I can see that there's a backup bin code which is the code that you type into WebCore to import the piston but also you notice that device names and phone numbers are made anonymous so that users aren't giving away any personal information by accident. You can save that screenshot and then post it onto the community forum. So the motion example we just went through is very basic, but I'll just quickly show you some other pistons as WebCore can do so much more. This one fires 24 unique actions in response to various button presses coming from an 8-button Z-Wave device. This would be impossible to do with native SmartThings apps and took me hours to create in original core. But in WebCore, it took me less than an hour to prepare the whole lot. This is my welcome home piston. It unlocks our front and back doors when one of three presence sensors returns home. It turns on lights, sends notifications and deactivates the alarm. If we come in via the front, the back door and the lights reset and vice versa. It also compensates for a number of presence related scenarios such as a sensor dropping out or when we drive past without wanting to come in. The community has already created hundreds of fantastic examples ranging in complexity. Piston screenshots are being shared on the forum, giving basic users the chance to do something amazing with their SmartThings systems. The possibilities are endless, and pistons can now be created at lightning speed. This really does take SmartThings to the next level of automation. Thanks for watching.